our planner Leslie Dotson, our engineer Andrew Featherston, stenographer Michelle L. Canero. Uh, my name is Fred Reichel, I'm chairman of the planning board. Uh, Rich Hoyt's our attorney, Suzanne the secretary, uh, board member Rich Montemorano, vice chair Jay Beaumont, board member Ryan McGuire. Um, we have a, a couple of things. I wanted to read the, the hearing notice first is the reason for this meeting and just bear with me it shouldn't take very long uh, the town of montgomery planning board the notice of completion of draft environmental impact statement or eis for medline industries inc distribution center pursuant to the state environmental quality review act notice of combined public hearing on eis and site plan and special exception use permit applications for medline industries distribution center this is a notice of the special board meeting. Please take notice that pursuant to Article 8 of the New York State Environmental Conservation Law and the provisions of 6 NYCRR 617, the Town of Montgomery Planning Board, acting as a seeker lead agency, determined on July 8th that the EEIS for the Medline Industries Distribution Center as described below was complete and ready for public review and comment. Please take further notice that pursuant to Seeker, the New York State Town Law and the Town of Montgomery Zoning Law, the Planning Board will hold a special meeting to conduct a combined public hearing on August 13, 2019 at 7 p.m. at the Valley Central Middle School Cafeteria, Route 17K, Montgomery, New York, to receive public comment on the DEIS and site plan and special exception use permit applications for the Medline Industries Distribution Center as described below. At the public hearing, all persons will have an opportunity to be heard. Persons may appear at the hearing in person or by agent. Written comments will also be received by the planning board prior to or at the hearing. After the closure, after the closure of the hearing, the planning board will also accept written comments on the DEIS for a period of 20 calendar days. All written comments must be addressed to the contact person noted below. Did you sign in? I did. Town Just Hall, in case. The planning board secretary. We need to talk. I'll let the description. No I'll leave the there. description I'm of the, the project up to um, <laughs> project sponsors. Um, after that description, I'll go over a few rules for uh, how we proceed this evening, and, um, and then we can get started. So I'll hand it over to you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Do I address the board or return this way? Uh, okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Um, on behalf of Medline Industries, uh, thank you very much. We're grateful to be here and present our project to you. Um, over the last 10 to 11 months, we've been working very hard to go through the process to answer all the questions and diligently answer all the questions. We appreciate all your time and professionalism. Medline Industries is a fourth generation privately held no debt manufacturer distributor of medical product and services. We're the largest provider of full spectrum healthcare services for the full continuum of healthcare to the hospitals, to the clinics, to the nursing homes, to all the other medical facilities in the United States, including Homeland Security, including military bases, A to Z. We have over 20,000 team members that provide day-to-day -day services to hospitals all over the country. This project is by far the biggest investment we've ever made in the community. It's a 1.3 million square foot distribution center, $120 million total investment, with over 300 jobs being transferred from Wawayanda into Montgomery, with a total commitment of 700 jobs. We are looking forward to complete the DIS process, answer all the questions, and proceed according to the process. We love this community. Currently today, there is over 50 employees that live in this community with their families. Once we move in and hire full 700 jobs, we estimate over 250 jobs will be filled from the town, village of Montgomery and the community in Maybrook. As we've said many times before, Medline is the company that goes above and beyond for its customers, its employees, and its community. We will make you proud, and we will always do the right thing. Some of the things that I wanted to mention is have been uh, noted in the media and other things, just to make sure we make it very crystal clear for everybody, is 
A, none of our trucks will go through the village. This is the number one question we've heard from the community, is no Medline trucks are gonna go through the village of Montgomery. That's no, number one. Number two, there is, there's been a lot of rumors, and we call them lies, unfortunately, and fabrications, that there was a nuclear waste in our facility. We've conducted multiple reviews, multiple tours. This is pure fabrication. There is no radioactive material stored at Midland Distribution Center. And number three is um, this facility is strictly a distribution center. There is no sterilization of any kind taking place at our distribution center. Thank you very much. We're looking forward to a successful meeting and looking forward to hearing all the comments from uh, public and um, always doing the right thing. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, first I'd like to read a few rules um, so that we can progress through this meeting. As, as I have some rules to, to read to the audience. Okay. Number one, sign in all persons wishing to speak shall sign in upon, come up front and sign in. Please print your name as, a, as I plan to recognize speakers in the order that they have signed in. Uh, public comment shall be limited to no more than five minutes per person. Each person shall be permitted one appearance at the podium. Once all who want to speak have spoken, if time permits, any person who has already spoken may take an additional appearance at the podium to address the board a second time. The speaker shall provide his or her name and the locality where they reside. Providing a full address is at the speaker's option. Timekeeping. Um, I'm going to keep the time. We have an hour glass up here. Comments. All comments shall be related to the purpose of the public hearing. Persons wishing to speak must address the board and face the board. We have a sonographer up here and please one person at a time, it's much easier to take good, accurate records. All persons must be recognized by the chairperson prior to speaking. Control. The chairperson shall control the public hearing. Under no circumstances will personal, impertinent, or slanderous attacks be permitted. The use of profane, vulgar, derogatory, inflammatory, threatening, abusive, racial and or ethnic or disparaging language is not permitted. Individuals committing such acts may be removed from the public hearing by the police. Any person or persons refusing to comply with a formal request to voluntary, voluntarily remove themselves from the meeting may be charged with disorderly conduct. I don't think we'll have that problem, I'm hoping. Written submissions may sub be submitted to the planning board clerk provided they are signed and dated. As far as signed posters and placards, there are, they are permitted in the hearing room, hearing room may not but may not block any travel aisle in the room or any other attendee from viewing the proceedings. Signs shall not contain obscene language, nor, they shall, nor shall they prevent the board or the security personnel from viewing the audience. This public meeting will be audio and video recorded and also be transcribed by a stenographer. Uh, just on a, a note of safety, there's an exit here. This side of me to my left, there's one through the hall that way. And if you go out either way, right or left, there'll be a, a, an exit out there in case of an emergency. All right, thank you all for your patience and for attending here this evening. I'd like to start, we'll start with our first sign-in, uh, Don Berger. What I first want to do here today is to greet the employees of Medline and the labor unions that are here. Yes. We are not a As a community, you have no objection to the Medline employees or the uh, people that are seeking employment. Uh, this is not an employment issue as far as we're concerned. Uh, we are looking at this more as a uh, method of how this uh, town board, planning board, and IDA board have put this whole project together. We object to that. We do not object to these employees. They have the right to earn a wage. They can do whatever they want. They're welcome here. We have uh, numerous times come before your board and we've gone before the town board and we've pressed a moratorium. And the mere presence of a moratorium, and all it is is us wanting to push back and say, relax guys, we have a major project here and it appears 
that is just being rushed. Uh, there has been a total lack of regard for the residents of this town by this board and the town board to allow us to have even a discussion of the moratorium. I requested on the town board side uh, for it to be placed on an agenda. That would never happen. Uh, we've talked about it before this planning board, and you shuffled me to the town board. The problem is we get shoveled between boards, 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 and nothing seems to happen. Uh, what I'd also like to talk about is I've met Dimitri uh, a couple times. Uh, he's a real nice guy. I have no problems with him. But one thing that we did talk about at the village meeting was the idea of good neighbors. And I appreciate that because everybody wants to be a good neighbor. My problem uh, tonight is, and I'm going to read a part of an email that was sent from Maureen Hallahan to uh, businesses up and down the corridor of Neely Town. We need your voice and presence. There is a small group of anti-development people that are trying to intimidate and persuade the Town of Montgomery Planning Board and Town Board from advancing and supporting the Menline project. The information they are circulating is irresponsible, inaccurate, and they will be coming out in force. I know Maureen doesn't live in Orange County, but how is that being neighborly? Yeah. I don't see it. Uh, she's uh, the chair of the Orange County Partnership, which I believe, and many people believe, is the problem. Mm -hmm. The Orange County Partnership is the problem. I believe they're putting on such pressure to this board, such pressure to the town board, that you're just listening to that group and perhaps other outside concerns, maybe some law firms. I don't think that's a good name. Also, the other issue we have is the idea that Medline, let's face it, you're running out on a, on a pilot program over at Way We Honor, and you're coming over to the, uh, the town of Montgomery requesting a 10 or 15 year uh, pilot program. You know, I always think a good neighbor is a neighbor who pays their taxes. That's what my father told me when I was a little boy. I think everybody knows that. The other part of that is that we have really bothers me is uh, in reading from the Times Tower record, uh, the Minnesota Valley School District, you've decimated. Last year, during their budget process, they had to uh, lay off 19 employees. That's not a good neighbor. That's killing the school district. I don't want that to happen here at Valley Central. I want Valley Central taxes to be paid, unlike, I guess, Medline. So what we've done is uh, we reached out to many people in this community, and I know you're going to say, well, this is not for us, but I'm going to give it to you anyway, Freddie. We've gone out and we've collected signatures for a petition for a moratorium to be instituted in this township. Uh, we're not putting a time frame on it. We're just saying take a break. And let's think about what we're doing. You guys have such major projects going on. If you're at the planning board meeting last night, that was a disgrace what happened at that planning board meeting. Because what's happening is you're riling up the folks that live here. And it was disgraceful what happened at that meeting. That should not happen. We should be working on this together. We don't have a comprehensive plan. I think it was, uh, the last comprehensive plan was in the Roman days, is that what we had? No, I'm sorry, 31 years ago. Come on. One minute, can I take a smoke? <laughs> so what I'm gonna to give to you is a copy of the signatures that we've collected so far. These signatures have only been uh, uh, collected for the past week, it's sizable, and we just uh, think that, or what I want to see, is for this planning board to communicate with the town board to reflect what the needs of the residents are. Freddie, last week you said we have to we have to work together. We have to listen to the residents. I want you to listen to the residents.
elected officials with us tonight. Um, Jim Scofus would like to speak, uh, state legislator. Uh, are, uh, are there any other elected officials in the audience that would wish to speak? Mr. Chairman and Planning Board, thank you all for the opportunity to speak tonight. Uh, my name is James Scoofus, and I'm the State Senator for the 39th District, which includes the town of Montgomery. Most of Medline's approvals are locally driven, as you all and I are aware. Uh, it's up to the applicant, just as with any other project, to satisfy the concerns that will no doubt be raised by many other speakers this evening. Traffic, environmental impacts, etc. Just as with any other project, if the applicant is unable to overcome those challenges, the project should be rejected. I would like to focus, I would like to focus on another aspect of this project, however, one that I have a general deep interest in as a state legislator, particularly when it impacts taxpayers that I represent, and that is the incentive package that's being proposed by Medline. Pilots serve a purpose that is crystal clear. When used properly, they're supposed to incentivize a project that needs incentivization to come to a community and be financially competitive. Furthermore, they're supposed to serve as a runway to full taxation. The proposed Medline pilot, however, flies in the face of any and all decency. It is no coincidence that just as Medline's 10-year pilot in Weiwayanda is expiring, literally they're in the 10th year, they decide to pick up, move, and go figure, begin the process for a completely new pilot. <laughs> if I'm a Weiwayanda taxpayer, and I used to represent them in the State Assembly, I would be outraged that this corporation, just as they're about to start paying their full property tax bill, as agreed to a decade ago, they conveniently decide to pick up their ball and go elsewhere. Montgomery, beware. It is my understanding that Medline originally went to the Orange County IDA for their new application, only to eventually shop around for a better deal, which landed them here in Montgomery. Is this so-called race to the bottom? Who can give me the biggest tax break approach? Any indication as to what kind of neighbors this corporate warehouse will be? I will let you all be the judge for that. Let's talk now about whether Medline really needs this incentive to be financially competitive. I recently went through their application to the Montgomery IDA, and there's a chart that breaks down Medline's estimated profits with IDA benefits and without IDA benefits. Year one with IDA benefits, 76,808,000, this is profit. Year one without IDA benefits, 74,804,000. Let me repeat, without a dime of IDA benefits, Medline will net $74,804,000 in just the first year. Any IDA benefits 
especially after having already received a decade's worth of incentives, has nothing to do with financial viability and everything to do with pure, disgusting corporate greed that's built on the backs of taxpayers. Your jobs are largely thankless, as no doubt you've come to learn, uh, but nevertheless, important public service. As you and local elected officials consider the merits of the Medline project itself, I respectfully urge this. Before considering another iota of the project's merits, make it clear to these folks that they need to get their hands out of the pockets of Montgomery's residents. Our message to them should be loud and simple. Pay your damn taxes. Anything short of that is irresponsible, offensive, and a disgusting display of greed. Thank you for your time. represents over 7,000 members throughout its jurisdiction, which includes Montgomery here in Orange County. Our members operate the heavy equipment machinery seen on construction sites. They perform land survey and layout. They also work in equipment rental and repair facilities, as well as in concrete and asphalt plants and quarries. I'm here tonight to speak in support of the Medline Industries Distribution Center project. Medline has proposed to build a state-of-the-art distribution center, which would only not only retain their present employees, but would eventually add over 300 new positions to their staff. With regard to the construction of the facility, the site work alone could provide my members with thousands of hours of work which is needed for them to provide for their families. Many of our members live in the area also. While many say construction jobs are only temporary jobs, it's jobs like these that support our members' families. With all due respect, while everyone is very passionate about their position on this issue, I feel the need for local job retention and job creation is crucial, and I thank you for your time and consideration of the project. Okay, uh, Joe Sapilli. Good evening, everybody. My name is Joe Sapilli. I am a little closer to the microphone. I'm Joe Zapelli, I'm a real person, and I'm a worker in this community, I'm a resident, and I've worked for Medline now for three years. Uh, before I worked for Medline, I worked for a company for 10 years, and at that point it was really tough for me to leave. I talked to my wife, and we made a family decision. Three years later, I'm still working at Medline because of what we say every day. Uh, our three pillars are taking care of the customers, taking care of Medline, but most of all, we take care of our team members. And our team members are members of this community as well. And we all go to work every day. We make sure we provide services and products for everybody that goes to hospitals, hospice, make sure that you're all taken care of on a day-to-day -day basis. And we take that very seriously every day. And I'm part of this community, and I'm telling you from what I've learned in my experience at Medline, is that what we say is what we do. And every day when I go to work, I don't have to worry if I'm gonna to work too late and miss a family event, or be a part of the community. I'm able to be there, I was a graduate of Washingtonville High School, 
Some of you might know me in this room. I graduated in 2005. So I'm a local resident, and I more or less want to be here to represent my company, my community, my family most of all, and say more or less that Headline is a company. We say what we do, and we take care of everybody involved. So I appreciate everybody's time. I appreciate everybody's hard work. I really, really hope we all consider when you're sitting in this room where I'm living in Walden, New York, I am a resident too. And I appreciate everything everybody does in this room. And I thank you for your time. Jackie Walker. I just want to Medline made that possible for me, and um, I'm just here to support my job, obviously. Uh, I think we have the most important customers. And, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Okay. <laughs> Maria Garcia. We were located in the other side of the city, uh, the middle town. When we moved to the present building, Guabayanga, I was able to keep in my job. Uh, I was able to keep in my job. It is awesome to have the opportunity to continue my career um, in Medline and move to Montgomery, uh, where I will be able to continue to impact people's life. This is very important to me personally. As I am an example of the lives that Medline impact, and I can't survive. If that's gonna be for Medline products, I don't wanna be here tonight. I tell you, um, this company offered me a career. For Medline, it's important that the customer have the hospital, how the hospital a patient needed on time. So I'm here working for Medline when we were only a employee. And now they grow in middle town wandering over and I expect to give you my job here Thank you for Chris Cerrone. Sorry I could not be here tonight as I'm away at a mandatory leadership conference, but I feel it is important to convey our support for Medline Project. This is a major project for the local construction industry. Medline is committed to the use of local union labor, and both Medline and its contractors continue to have open dialogue with the Hudson Valley Building and Construction Trades Council. Medline is early on in the construction process, and to date has only concentrated on the site work and concrete packages. Site work and concrete contracts will be awarded to union contractors ensuring that local union trades workers will be used and will earn good wages and benefits. We are working closely with Dimitri Dukan and Medline and Robert Murray of Boston Construction New York to ensure that all construction contracts are awarded to contractors who hire local. I commend, I'm sorry, who hire local which is a requirement of the Town of Montgomery local labor policy. I commend the Town of Montgomery for adopting a policy committed to protecting local labor and suppliers. The site work alone on this project is estimated to be over $30 million and will employ many of the laborers and operating engineers present here tonight. Further, this project will create over 350 construction jobs. Medline will be making a capital investment of $129 million for this project 
year one will generate $800,000 in annual taxes of $3 million a year by year 15, including a $2.3 million, which will go directly to the Valley Central School District. Like many recent projects throughout the Hudson Valley, Medline faces opposition. I commend Medline for holding informational sessions and addressing the concerns of local residents. To date, I feel that Medline has been a good neighbor and will address all issues within reason. In closing, Labor's Local 17 supports this project. The Hudson Valley Building and Construction Trades Council, which represents over 10,000 trades workers and 28 local unions, looks forward to working with the Town of Montgomery and Medline to move this project forward, ensuring the use of local, preferably union labor. Sincerely, Todd Diorio. Alan Mellinson. Good evening. My name is Alan Mellinson. I'm part of the Medline team. Uh, I grew up here in the village of Montgomery. I moved here in 1993. Uh, I went to this middle school. I graduated this high school. Uh, I recognize a lot of people in this room. I used to work at Chopra. It was my first job for five or six years. I was saying my first job was also here in Montgomery. I worked in ShopRite for five or six years. I recognized a lot of people in this room. I packed your groceries. I put your, your milk on the shelf. I pushed your cart or grabbed the cart from the snow to bring back in the building. Um, for me, Medline State in this, in this town is a, a big deal. It's pride for me. I have a three-year-old daughter now. She was born in Orange Regional Hospital. Sitting in that hospital room with Medline products everywhere. That was pride for me. I'm very excited about Medline wanting to stay in Montgomery. I'm very happy that Medline wants to protect my job and keep me here. Um, I said I just kind of want to get up and say my first name. You guys want to get up? I appreciate it. Sorry about this. It's, I believe, Raymond starts with a C. I apologize. I, I can't. I can't read it. Raymond. Raymond Cord. Cord. Yes. Card. Raymond Card. Oh, once, twice. Okay. Fine. Um, Thomas Walcott. My name is Thomas Walcott from the Village of Mabra. I'm speaking on behalf of myself and my wife Patricia. Uh, we have no vested interest in Medline Project, but we are supporters of RPM. Board members, you have to ask yourself, what has caused such an outpouring of attendance, passion, and emotion tonight? The simple answer is fear. The taxpayers of the town of Montgomery believe that something dangerous, painful, or perhaps life-threatening will change their current quality of life. Does the DEIS, prepared and paid for by the applicant, remove or mitigate these concerns? The answer is categorically no. In fact, it poses more questions than it answers in our opinion. Every topic addressed and reviewed for example, traffic, emergency services, air quality, noise, vital impact, water and sewer extensions, etc., appears to be very subjective in the applicant's financial best interest. Many, if not all categories, are concluded with minimal mitigation or none required. Subjective conclusions that, in our opinion, will be financially shouldered or endured by the Town of Montgomery taxpayer, both now and in the future. When it's noted in the DEIS, all conclusions are the applicants and are subject to further review and scrutiny by the planning board. 
Has the planning board completed due diligence? And if so, why was it completed in conjunction with a 1988 Montgomery Master Plan? The entire process and project demands a moratorium now, not after the fact. that it is trying to be the best corporate citizen from day one. We contend that it's no more than a corporate wolf in a citizen's sheep clothing. At its Waukegan, Illinois facility in 2019, it released 3,058 pounds of ethylene oxide, noted as ETO. In 2017, it released 2,860,000 pounds of the chemical into the air. The clear gas was a well-known neurological, uh, excuse me, the clear gas was already known to cause tumors in the brain, lung, breast, uterus, limb symptoms, as well as neurological and respiratory effects. Lake County, Illinois children have been breathing toxic carcinogenic air daily as there are multiple daycare centers and schools within striking distance. A 2018 EPA report noted that the small city of Waukegan, Illinois, biggest source of pollution was its Medline facility. Does this reflect the best corporate citizen model the town of Montgomery taxpayers are being sold from the press? Noteworthy of interest is a March 2000 legal action regarding the settlement. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Karen Hamilton. opportunity to speak to you tonight. My name is Karen Hamilton and I'm an almost 30 year resident of the town of Montgomery and I'm also a proud uh, team member of the Medline facility out in Middletown. I'm just here to let you know that from my experience I can confidently say that Medline takes care of its people, it takes care of its customers and it's a great company to work for It'll be a great source of jobs for future residents here. And I wanted to express my support for the new facility here in Montgomery. I'm well aware that it seems like it's just 10 years since they opened their facility in Middletown, but they've outgrown it. They've done such a great job with our customers that we are winning business left and right, and the facility is at capacity. And it means a lot to me that this company that I've only worked for for a year wants to keep its employees in Montgomery, that they're not gonna leave this area and I'll be out looking for a job again. Um, I trust in my company and um, hope that we have a great new facility here in the near future. Thanks so much for your time. Susan Cockburn. Well, we got one of those things. Is that Rod Winchell's? <laughs> He's already starting with the timing. Okay. Um, I made that. Medline sent out those postcards and artistically foreshortening was such that it looked like a tiny little building. So I used the right angle and I extrapolated across and I got in the, uh, I think it was, how many was the first? 144 tractor trailer bays in the front. In the back there's another 121 tractor trailer bays. There's a total of 60, 600 parking spaces for cars. 
I couldn't fit in the retaining walls because I couldn't get a piece of poster board long enough. I couldn't fit in all the water pits that will collect the water that's run off from it. That should be in there too. My point of that is, um, you know, you sent out those postcards, the fact about Medline. Well, that should have come as like a zip code because that's what you have. I put the plans right underneath it. So if anybody wants to verify those drawings, they're right there. Um, this is an industrial park area, which allows for three tractor trailer bays per to warehouse, and you've got 285 tractor trailer bays. This is a historic community. Uh, we have Neely Town Road for warehouses. And um, when Minnesink didn't get their school taxes, 65 people lost their jobs for this coming around. So I know you guys don't want to lose your jobs, but you know, you got teachers that get a teaching degree and are probably still paying off the loans. And they lost their jobs too. Mm -hmm. I feel like we're being used. Yeah. Uh, so that's who we are. Uh, if you make a pyramid here of who's going to make the money, it's not you or I. It's Medline, R.J. Smith, John Capella, Larry Wininski, Orange County Partnership, Maureen Hallinan. That's, that's the money pyramid right there. You guys might keep or lose your jobs. You're not going to make what they're making. This is at the expense of taxpayers and residents in the town of Montgomery. <laughs> was absolutely correct when he said that the DEIS should not be accepted because the town of Montgomery does not have a wastewater treatment plant. And when they tell you that they're going to enlarge the one we have, I don't think Medline realizes what you have in Montgomery, or then again, maybe you do, and that's why you came here. Montgomery doesn't have more than one building inspector. There's no MS4 inspector. There's no fire inspector. When I was town supervisor in 2004, there were two building inspectors full-time and one part-time. There's one guy now. Okay? One guy, and you have all these mega warehouses. Sailfish Amazon is coming in. They were already before the town IDA asking for a reduction in local labor. They wanted to go from 85 to 60 or lower. And if they don't get that, you know what? We'll just bring everybody up from Tennessee. We're being used. And you're being used, too. Oh, and Mr. Diorio, Mr. Diorio should know that when I was town supervisor, I had three reports done, one for 416 and 211. It would have facilitated avionic engineering technology projects. That's buildings. That's jobs on multi-levels, that's a future. It would have allowed for fly-in residential zoning. The farmer would have made $285,000 an acre and he wouldn't have had to sell a whole farm to see a profit. We're being used. Being, being planning for the report for 17K from Montgomery Village to Newburgh and from Walden to Maybrook to get all of that zoned and up to date. That did not happen. The 416, don't do that. That's just so crazy. Okay, it's fair, but it's not fair because these people, these taxpayers paid for those reports and none of it was implemented. There was also a townwide economic development plan that was put in place so that everybody could have jobs and jobs with futures and buildings and structures that would last and wouldn't cut loose when their tax breaks were up. That was put on the shelf and it still remains in draft form. So Mr. DiOrio, you should get the town board to draft those three reports out and get real construction, real building in place that people can be proud of, not something like this that is gonna destroy the quality of life for everybody in Montgomery. <laughs> We're, yes. dad and I are going to have to put through college. We're all on the same 
My name is Chris Camillo. Hello, everybody. Thanks for coming. We have a serious debacle here, and I'd like to say a couple words. The pilot program is a marvelous idea. I'd like to file for a restaurant for myself. I bought, with all the money I had, a restaurant in this town 22 years ago. I put your kids to work. I fed your kids, and I probably fed the family as well on my dime when they came in to see their kid. Uh, I thank Montgomery for that, but I really struggle to pay the taxes to this day. Uh, first of all, the 10 year pilot we learned didn't really work with Osram, which is still empty and uh, part of the police uh, uh, department of the town of Montgomery uh, Town Hall, uh, still vacant and uh, uh, income free and a, uh, uh, a, a, a burden on our tax money. The uh, Medline wants to be good neighbors and they're taking care of their employees. I commend them for that, uh, as they should be taken care of, but they want to be good neighbors, kind of like uh, the way they were a good neighbor in the way we ended when they walk out on the 10th year. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, the same article that was in the Times Herald record and was mentioned already by Mr. Scoobis or Mr. Berger, that they walked out on a $476,000 school tax or grant tax bill for the year and paid $17,000 of it. That's really kind of nasty. Uh, I've paid my taxes with interest every time and uh, struggled. And $76 million without the, with the, 74 million without the pilot is pretty nice money. I mean, I don't imagine they could, after 10 years, fork over the rest of that, almost half a million dollars, it would really be beneficial to a ton of end up sure, give those people their jobs at school back. But uh, the, the biggest problem I have is we've got a town board, planning board that's kind of elected by us, and I feel really bad that we've, we're fighting with you guys, and you're fighting with us. What's up with that? Don't you, aren't you supposed to work together with the community yeah. especially? Yeah. And with new businesses that might want to come and thrive, we're praying for an awful to do it with no plan or plan plan, with no master plan, no scrutiny. You're not counteracting, counter-offering anything. They come in, write themselves a, a note, Low water tables, pylons, God, what? We got a week of rain, what's gonna happen? The runoff for, for one square foot of land with an with a inch of rain is massive. Gallons of water, where's it going? Walkville's gonna flood a whole county. It's wrong. Nobody feels right in the town right now unless you work for Medline, and that's good. You should feel good, you've got a job. But it's not fair for the community, and you're not good neighbors. If you're good neighbors, you'd fork over the extra money that it's taxes. For you, it's a small tack off your profit. For us, it's often a bloody loan. So, do due diligence. Do your job. Pay us. We're doing an awful lot. Thanks very much for your time. Kristen uh, Brown. I'm sorry, Kristen Brown. So thank you for, um, first of all, thank you for everybody showing up. I thank the planning board and all of its associates um, because we all need to be heard equally. I'm a fifth generation farmer I'm on our family farm here in Montgomery. And I just have a couple of concerns. First off, simple, size and scale of the facility that's proposed with the impacts of our quality of life. We're, we're normal people, we're residents. We want a good, high quality of life and we want to be heard. This sets a dangerous precedence in our town, just like last night with Sailfish. Secondly, the location of Wayweanda. I go past it weekly. My folks' farm is in Wayweanda. My mom was a bus driver who retired early because of her concern with menacing school budget. It's secluded. There's no residence nearby. The location is a significant, much better position than what we're looking at with the close proximity to the village. Medline, you see a beautiful driveway, you see shrubbery, it sits back on the hill. That's something that we need to take in consideration with the location that it's proposed here, right next to the village. Um, so my, my biggest concern, one of my bigger concerns, is that they are leaving the facility, just as everybody else has said, it's been 10 years. So in the village of uh, Montgomery meeting, they said that this facility that they're building, they will not leave. 
and I believe that was part of the presentation that they had said. So why are you leaving Weiwianda now and not keeping Weiwianda as a satellite facility? If you think that you're, you know, you say that you're outgrowing it, well, what's going to happen in 10 years? If your business projection is going to continue to grow, are you going to outgrow this facility in 10 years? And then what? Then we're stuck with it? That's right. That's right. My last comment is just to you guys as the planning board, as a reminder, you guys work for us. And yes. we don't like it, there's an election in November. Maureen Hallahan. allowing us this public forum where everyone has the opportunity to speak. My name is Maureen Hallahan. I am the President and CEO of the Orange County Partnership. As our school tax costs rise and school budgets are negotiated year over year, we constantly have to make hard decisions that often result in cutting jobs and programs for our schools. As our special services and government costs continue to rise, we have to think long and hard on where all the money is going to come from to pay for all of this. The Orange County Partnership conducted a study a few years back that illustrates the importance of commercial development in the town of Montgomery. We did a search on how many properties in the town of Montgomery were zoned residential. There were approximately 7,000 parcels of land zoned residential. That doesn't mean there were 7,000 homes per se, but specifically sites that were zoned that way. Of those 7,000 residential parcels, those property owners pay approximately 65% a year in total taxes. On the flip side, there are just over 1,000 commercial properties in your town. 35% of your tax dollars generated in the town of Montgomery are paid by only 12% of your property owners. The properties zoned commercial. Commercial development is a critical component of our overall health and economic well-being. We have to support commercial development to offset our overall costs, especially for our schools. We're asking that you approve the Medline project, which will soon be one of the highest taxpayers in your town and one of your largest employers. Thank you so much. Not a done deal. Oh, yeah. Take it to Sullivan County. R.J. Smith. Good evening. I would like to uh, talk a little generically about a little history um, with Montgomery. My family moved here in 1720. Um, some of my family members were buried in the Brick Church and uh, have Revolutionary War emblem veterans on them. And, um, okay. The um, town of Montgomery has done a model job of preserving open space. It is, next to Warwick, it is the leader in the county of using the farmland preservation programs, purchase of development rights, conservation easements, um, in preserving over 12 farms. That's why you can drive up and down River Road, Walk Hill Avenue, Old Post Road, Hill Avenue. You can see farms that are preserved in perpetuity uh, because of the efforts. This board followed suit by using land use planning techniques to preserve open space, clustering developments, home to residential developments, and preserving with conservation easement open space. There literally have been thousands of acres that have been preserved. In the 1960s, the state built Route 84 through the town. In the 1970s, the town leaders identified the need to have this balance between open space, farmland, and residential use with economic development. It identified in comprehensive plans, um, it identified in their zoning the Route 84 corridor as the area to facilitate a small percentage of the town to facilitate economic development. It worked with the county to build County Route 99, Neely Town Road, specifically to facilitate economic development. 
frankly, the success I think is beyond what anyone believed it would have been. What's growing? Incidentally, this farm, Aidenbrook, conveyed land for Route 84. This farm, Aidenbrook, conveyed land for Newlytown Road. And this farm, Aidenbrook, conveyed land for the town's sewer treatment plant. It also conveyed land for Home Depot and conveyed land for UPS. Um, so this corridor is identified going back to the 60s in the comprehensive plans, multiple comprehensive plans, and multiple zoning and zoning changes as the corridor for economic development. And it says specifically, the 84 corridor from airport to airport, Orange County Airport to Stewart Airport, going back before it, it was even a public, so it was a, even a public airport. So this is the place where you want to facilitate the town of Montgomery is a role model in preserving open space, using land use techniques to do it properly, and facilitating economic development. This is appropriate and well planned. Thank you. Thank you.